Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is Monday, February 24th, and we're back for another day and week, really, of KSO Today from K-State Online. KSO Today is indeed brought to you by the fine people at People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. PSB alone has two branches and six ATMs here in the fine city of Manhattan, Kansas. On today's KSO Today, I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain at the uh, off the record release this morning by our own Derek Young, as it is pretty full of new unreleased football information. So that was exciting to read. I appreciate Derek's work on that. I'm also going to kind of go over the column I wrote yesterday, which was following Saturday's 70 to 59 loss to the Texas Longhorns and my feelings about this basketball season right now. Um, before I do, I want to let you know you can keep an eye out for a brand new football recruiting notebook coming from Derek Young probably Tuesday morning, as well as a likely announcement that maybe today or tomorrow on another little recruiting road trip for the KSO staff that we're going to take in the next couple of weeks or so that we're excited about. So listen and watch for those things. All of that said, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing going. First, like I said, I'm going to talk through off the record a little bit. If you're familiar with KSO, um, uh, you know I'm not going to share any of the meat and potatoes of this on a free on a free podcast. Uh, it's one of the, I think, the nicest things that we do. Derek put this all together himself. Uh, he'll share a lot of kind of stuff like this on the board throughout the year. And then also once in a while, we're at one of these off the record pieces. But I do want to give you an idea of what's in it, at least without perhaps a lot of the details. Um, Derek's got a list of players on here that he expects to be out for spring football, which is interesting to read through. Um, nothing that should really, really alarm you or shock you. It's very common, but he's got an idea of who you may not see this spring. He notes a positional change um, along offense that he has heard from one pretty good source, and it seems like it would make sense. So that's noted in there. We can keep an eye out for that. He also gives a guess of something that him and I talked through uh, on our last road trip to St. Louis. We have a decent guess right now on the offensive line of who the five starters would be if they played a game today. Now, uh, it's, a, it's a guess, like we just said, very educated, as he notes here in the story, because they haven't even had a practice yet this spring. So... Of course, it could change, but we do have some understanding of who the top five may be right now. A little update on the status of fullback Adam Harter, who there was some hope for medical redshirt. Um, but, you know, this is one thing I will say because uh, you can find this for free. He is not listed on the K-State website right now on the roster. So you can take what you think from that. He references the K-State staff being intact, which is a very, very big deal for Chris Kleiman's staff coming off a surprisingly impressive, at least to outsiders who would be looking for coaches, um, year one at K-State. He talks about some names that may have had some interest elsewhere. And we've got an update on the status of Felix uh, Andrew Dyke. I've never asked how to say his name. And I feel really silly right now. But Derek explains, you know, kind of why he hasn't signed yet and what to look for with him. So that's just all in today's off the record release this morning on KSO. If you're not a subscriber to it, it is something that's a premium content item. You would have to subscribe to it to be able to read all that information. And I appreciate Derek Young doing so. Uh, the next thing I want to do is talk through something that I also wrote as a premium piece of content for KSO Sunday, but I'll talk through a little more in detail now that we're a couple days out and people have had a chance to see it, I'm sure. And it really is just a column I wrote uh, on the K-State basketball season, you know, based off of Saturday's loss to Texas, my thoughts there, and then just big picture. So if you have read that column word for word, this may be a little repetitive to you. I'm not going to just simply read it off but I am going to be using it as my guide for discussion points. So if you've read it, I'm sorry if it sounds repetitive. You probably will hear, I guess, on a, on a positive note, some more thoughts of why I said what I did and maybe some caveats I would have placed in there if you're not trying to limit it to a certain number of words or space on your screen. But that's what I'm going to talk about. So as I led with, and this isn't about K-State basketball, but I think it's important for you to note because you haven't seen a lot of this kind of stuff from me lately. Uh, KSO, we've just become increasingly aware of uh, media and I'm not singling out one person. This is not a backhanded comment. It happens all over the place. Um, just forcing their opinion into their coverage, their work, their social media, their personality, their brand, whatever it is, to the point where you can no longer tell what somebody's opinion is um, or what they're trying to portray as fact. So something we have really slowed down on for the last four, five, six months are just out-and-out -out opinion pieces. Um, we know they're entertaining. They get good readership. I understand that. So sometimes I think I should do more and I will find a way to do more that I think doesn't fit me trying to shove an agenda down somebody's throat, which I really don't want to do. Um, what we love to do is when you ask us questions on our message board, we answer them. We'll share our opinion there like crazy, but we're not going to be presenting tons of news stories and reporting that are really just our opinion. 
All that said, I needed to write one here because a lot of you remember, I was pretty gosh darn happy to be able to write a column last season at the end of the Big 12 season when Bruce Weber won a second Big 12 title, praising him for his success and what he's done at K-State. Um, because as I get some biases out here, I personally like Bruce Weber. I think he is a genuinely good person. I think he cares about people. Those things matter to me. I understand some people hear that and say, well, who cares? He's a basketball coach. It matters to me. Um, I think he's proven at many stops to be a good college basketball coach. I don't think that's even debatable, to be quite honest, in my opinion. Um, I think he's done a very good job at K-State. And that does include this season, a really bad season when I look at his career in Manhattan. The point is, uh, it's, not a, it's not a big secret. I like Bruce Weber. I like this staff. I think they're doing a good job, and I think they're good people. So I'm pretty excited and pretty quick to write good things about them when they do good things. When a season goes like this, uh, it's easier for me to stay quiet, and I don't want the fact that I've slowed down on the opinion business in general uh, to be a really convenient excuse for me to ignore this topic. So um, I've seen a lot of people... I note this, you know, and I've said this on the show before, and it's what makes me laugh most about the Bruce Weber complaints. So many people I've seen about, and it's not just our side. I look at rivals boards everywhere. This idea of we want more championships. We want to compete for championships. Boy, I would take some down seasons to compete for championships. I've made the Gary Patterson reference before. I've seen people on KSO back in the day said I could, I could handle some four and eight Gary Patterson seasons for a chance to compete for a championship here and there. And I just laugh because that's what Bruce Weber gets you. Um, he's not finishing third or fourth in the big 12 every year. Like Frank Martin was, he's not going seven and five or eight and four, you know, in football every year, like Bill Snyder was, you know, in the better part of his 2.0 run towards the end. Um, but he has given fans two big 12 championships and a trip to the elite eight. So, uh, as far as tangible, you know, banner hanging ring making, you know, real championship type results, he's done more of it in his seven or eight years than, than probably any K-State coach who was at K-State for seven or eight years. The problem though, and this is what I have to acknowledge and get into is that, what happens in a season like this does figure into Weber's leg Bruce Weber's legacy at K-State, and it has to. Um, the, 50, the loss to Texas, a game in which, you know, like I wrote here, they weren't even competitive, if I'm being totally honest. And this is a game I picked K-State to win because Texas was, was banged up and not playing particularly well. And Texas handled K-State in Bramlage Coliseum in front of a pretty good crowd, honestly, for what K-State had done so far this year. So there's no excuse to it, and it's a game that you have to understand and look at and say, hey, this is where K-State is right now. That's, that was K-State's seventh loss in a row. That's the longest of the Weber era, and that is the most since 2001. So these are things that while I, I talk about how valuable to me the championships and those kind of things are and why I think he's had a great career, a good career at K-State, um, it's not okay to have a season like this. And I can relate to you feeling the way you feel, even if I don't share some of the same emotions about it. Uh, finishing last this year, which is what's likely going to happen, doesn't do anything to take away, in my opinion, from last year's Big 12 championship. Bruce Weber and Texas Tech, you know, in Lubbock, still snapped Kansas' streak. That's something K-State fans desperately wanted, and Bruce Weber did that. He didn't need somebody else to do it for him. K-State did it. They beat KU that year. They snapped the streak. That still exists. Finishing last, though, does allow for doubt to creep back in the mind of even the most positive person. I'm one of those people. I know some other on Twitter or on the message boards relate to that. And that's okay. Whether you're a positive person or a negative person, whatever, whatever label you want to um, throw on yourself, which probably isn't healthy to begin with, it doesn't matter because I can understand both quote-unquote sides right now and their feelings about Bruce Weber. Um, I can't fault anybody for what they've got upset about and seen on the floor this season. Even like I said, I don't. I share some of the same emotional uh, anger about it. I'm not faulting you feeling the way you feel. K-State's 9-18 and 18 overall. And I think the big concern or th things people have to prepare themselves for is the fact that the, their three best players, you know, X, Cardi, and Mac probably aren't back next year. We know X and Mac are gone. Cardi could come back, of course. We don't know yet. But it's a bad team that's 9-18 and 18 right now. It's probably going to finish worse than that, of course. It's going to lose its three best players. So you're looking at trying to be get much better, you know, with these freshmen, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy, Antonio Gordon, probably, you know, a, a group of seniors like David Sloan, Levi Stockard, Mike McGurl, Casey Azagu. And then I note at least, you know, the good news is by far Bruce Weber's best recruiting class at K-State. I think my concern, if you're looking in the extreme short term, we went and watched Davion Bradford and Luke Kasupke play last week in St. Louis. We've talked about it a ton, I understand. Um, they both were very impressive, but I noted in here, and I think K-State would say the same thing. They're not, they're both high-level recruits and prospects, both by ranking and how they look on the floor, but those two are not looked at as guys I don't believe that you think are going to step in day one and be starters or 20-minute players. Maybe you can argue that for Nigel Pack and Selton Miguel. In fact, perhaps I would for those guys, and perhaps Donovan Williams out of Lincoln if they're able to get them. But even asking that group, like I wrote, to match the production of guys like Snead, Moane, and, and Jada might be tough. So the point is, I think it could be another rough year next year. I'm not telling you to be okay with that. I'm telling you Bruce Weber is safe in his role at, as a role at K-State. That's not opinion. That's, that's fact right now. Um, but next year is when it's going to get interesting because I think it's going to be a season that I think almost by 
shoot, and I don't process elimination is the wrong word, necessity, uh, whatever. Uh, K State's going to probably have a better season next year. I imagine maybe they'll play an easier schedule, and things probably will just bounce their way by definition a little bit more. But the talent may be worse. At least the experienced talent will be worse. So it could be it could be as rough of a year. And if that happens a second straight year, you know I'll have an opinion on what that should mean and perhaps how much leash Weber should have. But other people will feel differently, perhaps, and that will be quite a discussion. I think the track right now, as I see it, and I'm not telling you to accept it. Um, is a year next year probably somewhat similar to this year, perhaps a little bit better. I think two years from now, you're probably looking at an NCAA tournament team um, on the fringe. And then three years from now, a team that, you know, if things go as they should go, recruiting classes continue to be even average beyond this point, probably a team that can compete for a Big 12 title and a deep tournament run. Those are all really far off projections and may totally change. They may be way better than I thought next year. Some of these guys can be more ready to contribute than I gave them credit for. And in three years, some of those guys may not be here and they're not very good again. So I'm just making a guess at that. But that's the track that I see. Ultimately, my point of this whole column was even for someone like me, who I would say supports Bruce Weber um, and believes he's done a good job, cannot ignore what having one of the worst seasons you know, in K-State basketball history, especially in Big 12 play, what it means. It doesn't take things away. But if you had doubts, if you had concerns, I understand why it brings them back. And then even a person like myself who looks at him very positively, at this program very positively, and does believe it has a bright future, at least has to look at it and acknowledge, hey, I didn't think it was going to go this bad again. So I have to understand that when I'm projecting out what I think this program is and can be going forward because I was wrong here. That's really all I have for today. I appreciate you listening through it. I rambled for a little bit longer than I meant to. I want to thank you again for taking the time. If you like what we do and support our work, please take a moment to hit that red subscribe button on our YouTube page. It's free for you. Uh, it takes just a second and is a good deal for us to be quite honest with you. If you aren't a paying member of KSET Online, I really would love for you to consider that too. Um, as you'll be able to see that type of intro that I've kind of hinted at from DY today and OTR and a much more regular basis on our message board. Um, among other content that we really hide for our paying subscribers, uh, that's fortunately allowed us to be, well, I mean, I mean the biggest premium K-State site by a pretty good margin you'll find anywhere. Uh, $100 for an annual subscription is a lot of money. I'm not going to pretend it's not. Um, but if you look at that as a, you know, a monthly commitment of what is that, eight or nine bucks, still a lot of money. It's not my money. Uh, I understand that when I'm telling you to spend it and selfishly for a product that I'm selling. But I do think our product is probably worth eight or nine bucks a month. I do think if you are not sure about subscribing to it and you think it's a lot of money, uh, one, I feel you. Two, I don't think you'd regret it. I really don't. I've never had one person. This is true. I've never had one person sign up for KSO so they weren't sure about it. And then write me a month later and say, man, I wasted my money. That's never happened. Um, the opposite has dozens of times, and it's always a cool feeling. But I'm going to stop now. Thank you so much for listening to KSO today. I hope you have a great Monday and a great week.